I want auroras and sad prose. I want to watch wisteria grow right over my bare feet because I haven't moved in years. And I want you right here. A red rose grew up out of ice frozen ground with no one around to tweet it. While I bathe in cliffside pools with my calamitous love and insurmountable grief. Our souls, therefore, which are one, though I must go, endure not yet. A breach, but an expansion, like gold to airy thinness beat. If they be two, they are two so, as stiff twin compasses are two. Thy soul, the fixed foot, makes no show to move, but doth if the other do. One verse was penned by a modern-day music sensation, the other composed by a 16th-century metaphysical poet. Two artists, at first glance appearing as mismatched as pieces from two remarkably different puzzles, exude stark similarities in their writing styles, despite the cataclysmic menagerie of centuries separating their lives. Hello, I'm Bailey Culberson, your favorite literature enthusiast. It is a widely known fact that I am obsessed with both poetry and Taylor Swift. Earlier this year, my humanities teacher introduced me to a generation of poetry of which I had never heard, metaphysical poetry. As I was reading several poems from this era, I noticed very interesting similarities in the writing styles of John Donne, who is one of the more famous metaphysical poets, and modern day singer-songwriter Taylor Swift. This led me down a rabbit hole of research and I discovered some fascinating things. So, for today's episode of Baker's Gonna Bake, I'm going to bake Taylor Swift's chai tea cookies recipe while we discuss her connection to John Donne. Are you ready for it? Let's get started. So Taylor Swift was born in Pennsylvania on December 13, 1989. At the age of 17, she skyrocketed into the limelight when she released a single entitled Tim McGraw and her subsequent debut album in 2006. John Donne had a similar early start to his career. He began composing poetry in the 1590s at around the age of 18. Since their debuts, both authors have received acclaim for their distinct writing styles, through which they exhibit extraordinary abilities that only emerge once in a century. Both authors incorporate lots of detailed imagery, creative metaphors, beautiful diction, and impressive similes. These similarities are apparent in two of their pieces, John Donne's A Valediction for Bidding Morning and Taylor Swift's 10-minute version of All Too Well. Forbidding Morning relates the story of a man consoling his partner as she is upset about an impending separation. As virtuous men pass mildly away and whispers to their souls to go, while some of their sad friends do say the breath goes now and some say no. These first lines of Forbidding Morning use imagery to paint a picture of friends mourning the passing of someone. It makes the audience imagine a funeral, evoking strong feelings of sadness within the audience. In the first lines of All Too Well, Swift sings, I walked through the door with you, the air was cold, but something about it felt like home somehow, and I left my scarf there at your sister's house, and you've still got it in your drawer even now. These lines tell the story of someone remembering a relationship. It makes the audience feel like they were actually part of the story. Both authors included these detailed moments at the beginning of their pieces. They are expertly utilizing imagery as a tool to immediately capture the audience's attention, allowing readers and listeners to be emotionally moved by the stories. Another similarity is their pinning of moving metaphors. John Dunn wrote, if they be two, they are two so, as stiff twin compasses are two. Thy soul, the fixed foot, makes no show to move, but doth, if the other do. This is one of Dunn's more famous metaphors. He is comparing two lovers to a stiff twin compass. This is the modern day version of the compass to which he is referring. When analyzed, this is the perfect metaphor for the two lovers featured in this poem. Even though the two ends of the compass are physically separated, one end is always connected to the other and both parts move in tandem. In All Too Well, Swift sings, 
From when your Brooklyn broke my skin and bones, I'm a soldier who's returning half her weight. This metaphor is also clever because it carries the literal meaning of a soldier returning from war that has an altered appearance. So the relationship is the war and the speaker lost weight due to the sadness or trauma from the experience. But it could also represent the speaker losing the weight of another person or half of the relationship. Like Dunn's, this metaphor is expertly curated and is the perfect inclusion to the song. These brilliantly crafted metaphors and detailed imagery perfectly emulate the ideas posed in each piece, demonstrating Swift and Dunn's literary mastery. Also, just as a fun side note, there is a direct reference to Dunn's poem in Taylor Swift's song, Invisible String. In this song, the speaker poses the idea of an invisible string of gold that tied her to her partner before they met. Dunn discusses a similar idea in his poem as the speaker says there is an invisible string tying the couple together even after their separation. I'm not sure if this shout out was intentional, but it's still a really interesting idea. Another impressive similarity I noticed between Dunn and Swift's writing was their use of metaphysical conceit. Metaphysical conceit is a literary technique that uses unorthodox language to describe an everyday concept. It creates a metaphor for something ordinary using something really unexpected. John Dunn was known for his creative metaphysical conceits, and he is referenced in most papers regarding metaphysical poetry because of it. Metaphysical conceits are not commonly used anymore. Most of its uses are within the metaphysical poetry era only. But I did notice some metaphysical conceits in some of Taylor Swift's songs. In his poem, The Flea, Dunn uses a flea to represent a couple's love and desire. This flea is you and I, and this, our marriage bed and our marriage temple is. Though parents grudge and you, we are met, and cloistered in these living walls of jet. Though use make you apt to kill me, let not to that self-murder added be, and sacrilege, three sins in killing three. This is a metaphysical conceit because the speaker is using a crazy metaphor, the flea as the pair's love, as a method to convince a woman to sleep with him. Taylor Swift's song, False God, uses a metaphysical conceit as it uses religion as a metaphor for desire and sexual intercourse. In False God, Swift sings, they say the road gets hard and you get lost when you're led by blind faith but we might just get away with it, religion's in your lips, even if it's a false god. We'd still worship, we might just get away with it, the altar is my hips, even if it's a false god. Using religious idols like faith, god, and altars to symbolize sexual intercourse can certainly be classified as a metaphysical conceit because unorthodox language is describing an everyday, mundane concept. This incorporation elevates Swift's writing, proving that she creates both literature and art. While the cookies are baking in the oven, I'm going to brew a pot of tea. I'm pairing English breakfast tea because even though home is where the heart is, we know Taylor loves the English. Also, an interesting coincidence is that John Dunn was born in London, England. Taylor may love the English, but apparently English literature loves her as well. Even though their works were written over four centuries apart, Taylor Swift and John Donne certainly demonstrate similar writing styles and techniques. The Twain brilliantly incorporates elaborate imagery, clever metaphors, and impressive metaphysical conceits to elevate their writing and cement their places in literary history. Now, all that's left is to taste Taylor's cookie recipe. Brilliant, just like Taylor. Both Dunn and Swift are excellent authors, but Swift can certainly give a good cookie recommendation too. I have linked the recipe and my sources in the description, so if you want to do any research of your own or try these cookies, you have my resources. If you want my full essay comparing Taylor Swift and John Dunn, you can view it using the link in the description. That's all for today's episode of Baker's Gonna Bake. Thank you for watching. And if you're Taylor Swift, I have the time of my life fighting dragons and researching you.